the entrance antiphon. O Lord, hear my voice, for I have called to you. Be my help. Do not abandon or forsake me, O God, my Savior. Good morning. Good morning. Today's mass intention is for author and Diana Monks. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. Let us come before the Lord to confess our sins and so to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries of God's great love. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, strengthen those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas, and since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. We want you to know, brothers and sisters, of the grace of God that had been given to the Church of Macedonia. For in a severe test of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their profound poverty overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. According to their means, I can testify, and beyond their means spontaneously, they begged us insistently for the favor of taking part in the service to the Holy One, and this not as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord and to us through the will of God, so that we urged Titus that, as he had already begun, he should also complete for you this gracious act also. Now, as you excel in every respect, in faith, discourse, knowledge, all earnestness and in the love we have for you may you excel in this gracious act also i say this by not by way of command but to test the genuineness of your love by your concern for others for you know the gracious act of our lord jesus christ that for your sake he became poor although he was rich so that by his poverty you might also become rich the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial song. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord, my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God while I live. Praise the Lord, my soul. Blessed be blessed he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them. Praise the Lord, my soul. Who keeps faith forever, secures justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry, the Lord sets captives free. Praise the Lord, my soul. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord raises up those who were bowed down. The Lord loves the just. The Lord protects strangers. Praise the Lord, my soul. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I give you a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. 
reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your heavenly Father. For he makes his sun rise on the bad and the good, and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. I believe I've mentioned a couple of times before that the uh, country of Greece is uh, really divided into two main sections. There's the, the Greek mainland that's attached to Europe at the time of uh, Jesus that was called Macedonia. And then there's the lower peninsula celebrate, uh, separated by the Isthmus of Corinth. And that's the Peloponnesian Peninsula, the southern part of Greece. Uh, I went to Greece one time, and you take this fabulous bridge across the isthmus and go from the northern part to the southern part of Greece. Well, uh, in, uh, in the time of Jesus and St. Paul, uh, the northern part of Greece, or Macedonia, was very poor, materially and financially poor. The people kind of didn't have two nickels to rub together. They didn't have a major source of income. And so St. Paul is absolutely flabbergasted and amazed that the people of the churches in the northern part of Greece, Macedonia, come up with this big collection of money for the struggling church in Jerusalem, which is being persecuted. He is writing this letter to Corinthians, the Corinthians in the southern part, saying the churches of Macedonia, in, in a severe test of affliction, in their profound poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part and they did this on their own I can testify beyond their means spontaneously without asking for me they begged us insistently for the favor of taking part in the service to the holy ones in Jerusalem not at all what we expected so St. Paul is applauding these poor people who came up with a generous collection from their little meager resources to help a struggling church. Now, he's writing to the church in Corinth. That's the southern part of Greece. That part of Greece was wealthy. That's where all the merchant ships came, crossing the Mediterranean from the east to the west, bringing goods all over the known world. They've got lots of money, but they're not giving anything. And St. Paul says to them, now you excel in every respect, in faith, discourse, knowledge, earnestness. May you excel in graciousness also. Translation, stop being cheapskates. Stop being cheapskates. You have way more money than the other people who are given to the church and to charity. Now, he doesn't use those words. He's trying to be nice, you know, and encourage the people. But that's exactly what he's saying. And he says, remember that your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was the richest person who ever lived, but humbled himself and became poor so that you might become rich. He embraced humanity and its poverty so that he could save us. And so this is a, a real strong uh, advocacy for generosity. Uh, and in fact, it's really what Jesus is saying in the last line of Scripture. Be perfect just as your heavenly Father is perfect. Well, we'll never be perfect like God. But we are to follow the ways and the means of God. And that word that, that Jesus uses is the same word he used. You remember the rich young man who came to Jesus and said, uh, I follow all the commandments. I've done everything right all my life. Am I ready for the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus says, if you want to be perfect, go sell all the rich stuff you have and give it to the poor. 
and then you'll have treasure in heaven. So Jesus is definitely saying that part of becoming like God is giving of what we have and not having to be asked all the time, but seeing the need and stepping forward. I remember when I was a practicing lawyer, um, way before I started giving regularly to the church, uh, I had been going through my transformation, my conversion, and I remember the priest in my church making an appeal to uh, improve the interior of the church. It was in very poor condition. And he said, we're gonna need a bunch of money to do this, and uh, I gotta come up with that money. And I remember being really convicted by God that God was asking me to be a major benefactor and donor for that campaign. And I wrote the biggest check I ever wrote in my life. And when I was giving it to the priest, I was still holding on to it kind of tight. And my hand was shaking. And I said, this is for the church renovation. I'd never done this before. It was a big act of faith and trust, you know, uh, to be able to do this. And what I found out as a result of that is that God started, once he realized that I was going to be generous and charitable, because that opened the floodgates for me, he started throwing money at me. Not that we're going to be blessed with money or financially every time we do something for God, but I think when God recognizes that we're going to do good works for the needs of our world, our church, our community, God makes sure we have the means we need in order to do that. So that's it. That's the word from St. Paul today. Applause to the church, poor people of Macedonia. Boo to the cheap people of Corinth. And may they come to understand the call of God to be perfect, which is being generous with our time and talent, absolutely, but also with our treasure. Please stand and let us bring our prayers and needs to our Heavenly Father. For all who minister within the church, may the grace of God uplift them to their proclamation of the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, may the example of Jesus' servant leadership guide their diplomacy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who struggle to love others as Christ does, may Jesus grant them a cherishing heart and a fearless spirit, conforming them to his perfect love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our peace in our world, for the men and women of the armed forces wherever they serve our nation, and for the safety of all first responders who serve our communities, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and permanent diaconate in our archdiocese. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pause to add our own intentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit on the bishops of the United States as they begin their spring meeting tomorrow and begin considering some important issues in the church, that they may be guided and blessed by the work of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now our morning prayers. Prayer for the protection and healing of the coronavirus and our family prayer. Lord, Lord Jesus, you traveled through towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. Come to our aid in the midst of the coronavirus, that we may experience your healing love. Heal those who are sick with the virus, may they regain their strength and health. Bring those who have died from the virus to eternal peace. Protect doctors, nurses, and healthcare professionals as they help the sick. Allow the vaccine to be successful in halting the spread of the virus. Be with leaders of nations. Give them wisdom to act in true concern for their people. Grant us peace in this time of uncertainty and challenge. We pray this in your most holy name, Jesus, for you are our loving and healing Lord. Our Lady of Prompt Succor, St. Joseph, St. Francis Xavier, St. Rock, and St. Rosalie, pray for us. Amen. Loving and faithful God, through the years the people of our archdiocese have appreciated the prayers and love of Our Lady of Prompt Succor in times of war, disaster, epidemic, and illness. 
We come to you, Father, with Mary, our mother, and ask you to help us in the battle of today against violence, murder, and racism. We implore you to give us your wisdom that we may build a community founded on the values of Jesus, which gives respect to the life and dignity of all people. Bless parents that they may form their children in faith. Bless and protect our youth that they may be peacemakers of our time. Give consolation to those who have lost loved ones through violence. Hear our prayer and give us the perseverance to be a voice for life and human dignity in our community. We ask this for Christ our Lord. Our Lady of Prompt Succor, hasten to help us. Mother Henrietta Leo, pray for us that we may be a holy family. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant we pray that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory, our Bishop, his fellow bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. 
and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. <clears throat> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Communion Antiphon. There is one thing I ask of the Lord, only this do I seek to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life.
Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Have a great day. Thank you. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, the Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking their own souls. Amen.